before I get started, I'll put on some, some of this gloves in a bottle, which is wonderful stuff. Keeps my hands safe from any chemical that might be going on. And I want to make a very important point about the manner in which I'm doing that edge. I mentioned earlier that I do a lot of architectural painting. Which means a lot of my paintings have straight lines in them. But I'll hasten to say my straight lines are not really straight. Let me illustrate that on another poster. <clears throat> Let's say that I have over here a, back, a background, a, a, an underpainting of sky. And over here I have, just as I did there, a building just to identify what's going on here. So this is light color, this is dark. When I come to do the overpainting, the temptation, let me use a big wide marker, the temptation would be to take my sky colored paint and come up to that building and paint a hard straight line and then backfill all of this area in here, right? That would be, you would say, well, why wouldn't you do that? The, the, the sky comes right up to the building. The building comes right up to the sky. Here's why I wouldn't do that, because it's boring. <laughs> our eyes like to see things. Our eyes like to see interesting things. Our, our eyes like to see complexity and richness and detail, not boring things. If you have, let me redraw that line then and illustrate how I would do that. So now I've moved the sky all the way over to here and the, the building's still over here. In fact, you saw me do it there, but I just want to illustrate what it is that I'm doing. This is a, a very important trick, or maybe a mostly immutable law of painting, is if you draw a line like that, let me, let me come up with a better example. The, my building, the edge of my building was not straight. It was kind of fuzzy. There we go. Do you understand what I'm saying? Before I did the overpainting, the edge of this building was rather fuzzy. So that's reflected by this. So the way I paint my sky is I come up to the building and I let little bits of the building color show through in my sky and I let little bits of the sky spill over into the building. And I'm being very technical here. I hope you can follow me. Let me say that again. I allow little bits of the building color to remain out in the sky area. And I may even paint some of the sky color into the building. One way to put this, and this is on my mostly mutable laws of painting, is allow the object, paint your object into your background, abbreviated by as BG, and vice versa. Allow your background to come into your object. You might be saying, well, why? Why? That doesn't make sense. Let me take just a minute. Again, I don't get too, de too deep, too heavy, but I think you can understand this. The, there is a difference between the way human beings see and the way human beings look. Okay, I'm going to use those two terms. You could, there are many other words that would work just as well. I'm assuming that you can see the edge of this mat board. If you look, and this would work if you were here in person as well as on video, if you look at the edge of this mat board, you can see that it is straight, that it's hard edge, there's a sharp crisp line of delineation, to be redundant, there's a, a sharp crisp break point from where it turns from mat board to not mat board, right? That is the way human beings look, but that is not the way human beings see. Now here's where I'm making a distinction between those two. While I was telling you to focus on this edge of the mat board, you were looking at it. 
But at the same time that you were looking here and seeing, yes, it's straight, yes, it's straight, you were not looking at this edge of the mat board. And do you know what this edge of the mat board was doing? It was fuzzy, it was pixelating, it was interchanging, it was loose and wobbly. We, we owe, I think this, the, the, this uh, discovery almost, the, the, the man who brought this reality to light was Monet. That's, he, he's, he, he's the father of Impressionism. He said, when you look at objects in nature, they pixelate. You look at Monet's paintings. There are many senses in which Monet's paintings of water were far more realistic than the realistic paintings who preceded, painters who preceded him. Because he said, I know that if you look at a wave that's moving, it's very hard, sharp, crisp outlines of reflection. And some artists do that, and it's fascinating, it's good, it's a valid way to approach it. But it probably is not the most realistic. In fact, because when you're looking, looking at this edge, this edge over here is dancing around on you. Okay, so if I want to do a painting here, and if I want this edge of this building to be realistic, I will make this, the edge of this building dance around, just the way the edge of this mat board was dancing around. Does that make sense? So, because people, when people look at my painting, let me ask you this, I hope I'm not getting confusing. When people look at my painting, what are they going to do? Are they going to look at it, or are they going to see it? If they walk down the hallway and are just passing by, they're just going to see it. But if they stop and look at my painting, they're looking at it, right? Therefore, my pixelation, my dancing edges like this are, in fact, more realistic than if I painted it hard, sharp, and crisp. Okay, enough of that. 